For the word of God is quick and powerful, and it's sharper than two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joint and marrow, and is a discerner of the thought and intent of our heart. Listen to this message and remain blessed. How many of us can humble ourselves to press for knowledge sincerely? Business people, will you keep failing and losing money in ignorance, whereas for half the price using the currency of humility someone can teach you the way out and take you away from shame and reproach man of god with humility you can receive an anointing and go back and add that anointing to what you have and your ministry would blossom let us not allow god's people die because of our ego remember the mission is jesus when the mission is jesus you must be able to stay out of the way let me use a better expression to decrease like john said so that you will increase our ego is interrupting the program of god at a frequency that is becoming disturbing we do not have everything we do not know everything as far as that which God has committed to us is concerned, we owe God's people to teach with diligence. The areas God has given me, the areas of grace, I will teach you with all my heart and I will serve the body of Christ in life and in death. But the areas where I have not been graced, with humility I will sit down and learn from those who God has given. There is nothing to be ashamed of. I remind you again, body of Christ, the mission is not koinonia. The mission is Jesus. The mission is not apostle, prophet, evangelist, businessman. The mission is Jesus. I pray that the body of Christ will grow and mature to a stage where we are able to diminish our ego and our insecurities that have come from our backgrounds to throw away our prejudices and to focus on exalting Jesus. Koinonia, for as long as I'm alive, I will never let my ego to let you die in limitation. No. It is Jesus to be revealed. If there is a mighty man of God that is in the making, I will share with you what I know about ministry. And when I reach my limit, I will recommend books by veterans who have a greater track record than me. And I will tell you unashamedly study their materials. They will do a better job in building you than me. It is not insecurity. Let me teach you something. When you are willing to lose, that is how you will gain. Members are not stupid people. When they discern insecurity and manipulation that comes as a result of insecurity, they will run away. Jesus said we gain things by the willingness to lose them. Koinonia is not my ministry. I am only a privileged steward over this. It belongs to Jesus. God forbid if I die today, the ministry will not end. I am too small a factor to impede the program of God. It is a privilege that I'm alive and having the honor that God has given me in my lifetime to do what I'm doing. This is the orientation we must have in the body of Christ. And please don't tell me it does not matter. The destruction that our ego and ignorance is bringing to God's program is becoming a matter of casualty. We must be able to trust God. I travel and I meet a great man of God, an evangelist. Oh, God bless you, sir. Oh, I've seen the wonderful things you are doing. Ah, apostle, don't laugh at us. You are the ones who are doing great things. And I say, no, no. I would be stupid to imagine and downplay your relevance. Let me use the opportunity to say this. You see, every man of God is somebody's man of God, even if it's not your man of God. Let me repeat again for your knowledge. Every man of God is somebody's man of God. If he's not your man of God, respect the fact that he's somebody's man of God. If you tear down, castigate, insult, demean, downplay another person's man of God, the loyalty of the members will force them to fight to defend their people. And at the end of it, I told you earlier on, there will be no winner. Are we together now? Yes. Every businessman is somebody's mentor. If you do not appreciate their value to you, leave them in peace to bless the people they are blessing. Are we together now? Yes. There is nothing wrong with having your reservations, 
but let it not be to the detriment of the overall growth of the body. I'm saying this because it is very important for us to learn. I repeat again, every man of God, genuine man of God, is somebody's man of God. You may not appreciate of their ministry. They may not seem to communicate any value to you, but realize that they may not be of value to you, but that is somebody's man of God. Let me give you an instance. If this man standing here is some man of God, for instance, Pastor A, let's call him, and this guy is responsible for your salvation, for raising you, while you were trusting God for children, this was the one who prayed and you have children, and someone comes to downplay and demean that person simply because of your perception or maybe your biases. Can I tell you, this man will not keep quiet. He's had too much testimonies as a result of the grace of that man. This is what we must be mindful of in the body of Christ because the body of Christ is confused today. Members are sincerely confused. They don't know what to believe again simply because of the ego of we preachers loudly. It's time to shelve our prejudices and our pride and to exalt Jesus. If Jesus is not afraid of the current state of the church, you are not greater than him. Allow him to be the head of the church. Don't take the issue of the church so personal. You are not Jesus. I am not Jesus. He stands in the midst of the church and in the midst of our imperfection. Let me assure you, the mission of the church will not be aborted. The jealousy of God is protecting this work. And in life and in death, at the end of it, Jesus is coming for a victorious church. If you believe me, shout a loud amen. amen. This is especially for younger ministers that are rising up. May I encourage you that as you mentor the life of those who have gone ahead of us, and as you have the privilege to look at our lives, beware. Do not swallow everything hook, line, and sinker. We are not perfect people. Do not dishonor those before you because of the limitations you see. But be wise enough to edit the things you are learning. Joshua Selman is not Jesus Christ. Do not be ashamed to edit that which is profitable for you and that which is not profitable for you. There is nothing to be ashamed of. So that the people who we are raising will become better versions of us. This is our goal. Are we together? But that sense of invincibility and perfection will keep destroying the church. It is ugly to see ignorance and pride go together. Very ugly to see limitation through ignorance and pride. It is amazing that sometimes we are impressed with our very little results. But from the lens of superior orientation, you can see the gaps in our knowledge. It's time for our hearts to be open to receive. Is God speaking to someone? Write this down. Regardless the imperfections in the body of Christ, regardless the imperfections in the body of Christ, Christ is still in the midst of his body. Regardless the imperfections in the body of Christ, Christ is still in the midst of her. Nigeria right now, as you would have noticed, is spearheading a global revival by the privilege of God's grace. God is sending prophetic and apostolic envoys from Nigeria across the globe. It is a rare privilege that God has given us. It doesn't mean that there are no revival in other regions, but for some reason, God has chosen in this season to honor Nigeria and grant us the grace to spearhead revivals. But my call to us is we must be careful. The privilege of carrying the lamp of God to the nations does not mean we are better than other nations because I can tell you our problems are glaring before us. As anointed as we are, we have not been able to solve many problems in this nation. So God's call is an election of grace. Let it never be a reason for pride. Now God is sending us to the United Kingdom, sending us to the US. It does not mean there are no men of God there. There are mighty men of God. And even us in addressing Western nations, please let us not make it look as if everybody there has backslidden. Because there are still mighty men and women who are doing great things for the kingdom that some of us do not even come close to. There are still veterans in the gospel serving God with all their lives. I think it was John Hagee, Pastor John Hagee. I listened to him a few 
um, a few days I was just sitting just to rest and then I decided to listen to him and he shared something within about maybe 15 to 28 minutes profound revelation that gave me such an orientation I said look at this man's depth of conviction an old man right now if you call Joshua Selman anointed you did not lie if you say Joshua Selman is trying as far as doing his best for the kingdom you did not lie if you say Joshua Selman loves the Lord with all his heart truly you did not lie but if you say Joshua Selman has everything you lied no you lied there are many dimensions you will need in your life that may not be available here our our dream is to see to it that we piece together by knowledge you see when we seem to sound complete it is not because we were intrinsically complete it's because we became students of other dimensions of knowledge too that is why when we speak there seems to be a level of healthy balance it is not because we were balanced by default the bias of our trainings would have still affected us but because we outsourced dimensions that was not captured in our training but needed for our growth I didn't learn excellence and leadership and administration by default. We learned fasting and prayer and spirituality. Yes, it came with our training. But these other aspects did not come with our training. We had to outsource it from the intelligence that is invested in the body. And thanks be to God that we opened up our hearts to receive this.